What's up guys, welcome to Manny Mechanics. Today I'm gonna to be working on this Peterbilt 567. The customer came in and said his check engine light was on, so I'm gonna see what's going on. So I hooked up my laptop and I pulled out the codes and there was a code for the particulate matter sensor for the after treatment system. So what I'm gonna do is change out the sensor. So I'm gonna be removing the electronic portion first and then the sensor second. So if you stick around till later on in the video, you guys will understand why I did that. And first thing you gotta do is take off this connector. Be really gentle with this one because these are very brittle and can break really easily. And once you pull off the connector, just do a quick peek. Just make sure there's no corrosion on the inside. And that one is good. Just gonna check out the other side of the sensor. And that looks good as well, no corrosion. So there must be an internal issue. So here's another angle and you can see there's a crack right here on the side of the sensor. So that is no good. And also right here, I didn't even have to open up the bolts. It was just cracked and just hanging in there. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. And uh, I'm just going to open up the bolts first and then get the new one in there. All right, so I got my 3 8 ratchet here and I'm using an 8 millimeter socket to get this open. So there's only two bolts and it shouldn't take too much effort to get it off unless they're seized. And now I'm just gonna cut off the necessary tie straps that are connected to the sensor. And here's the particulate matter sensor itself. And like I said, I'm taking this off second because usually when you're taking off these old ones, the threading portion and the sensor are usually seized together and it always spins together as one unit like you can see right here. Now, if I had not taken off the electronic side, this whole harness would end up tangling up and the wire would probably end up breaking off. And now because there's a core charge on this, I need to have it in the most original condition. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just clean up those two bolts that I opened up, make sure they're all nice and polished before I install the new sensor back on. And here's the brand new sensor. You guys can get a better sense of what it looks like. So you can see the sensor on one side and the electronic unit on the other. So I'm just gonna install it right back into where it came out of, obviously. I'm just going to put this electronic connector back on um, to put this on it's a little bit tricky um, you have to push from the back and press down on the yellow portion at the same time just like that and then it should be good to go okay so the electronic part is good to go now i'm just going to put the sensor back in so i'm going to take off this cover and just screw it back on and like I was showing you guys earlier, see this threading part? It's separated from the sensor itself. So installing this is a breeze. Now, if it wasn't made like this, me tightening this up would be really hard and the whole harness would be spinning along with it and it would just be getting tangled and it would be a nightmare. Okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and just tighten it all the way up with my wrench here. So I'm using a 24 millimeter. I'm using a Craftsman wrench set. I've had this wrench set for over 10 years and I absolutely love it. This is super heavy duty and they're really thick and I've never had any issues with them. Next, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, put all these tie straps back on that I took off earlier. Just cut off the excess. One more. So I just hooked up my laptop again and I cleared all the codes. So now I'm just gonna see if this check engine light goes away after doing a key on cycle. Perfect, that's what I like to see. Thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you guys liked my videos. If you guys did, give me a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.